So right now I want to introduce you to Martin Breckfield, MMR. Uh, you heard Martin talk about the, uh, the K-break systems underbody detail last week. And tonight he's going to talk about another kind of underbody break system. Uh, and I think between these two, you can pretty well do anything that you want to as far as cars are concerned for your model railroad. So Martin, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. I guess that's always true that you can always do whatever it is you want to do to your cars anyhow. Uh, <clears throat> nobody's going to stop you, least of all me. So the basic AB brake system. Okay, this is not going to be as quite as extensive as last week, simply because I don't really install very many of these. Uh, a new model pre-1920, uh, you don't see too many AB brake systems in your models. In fact, none, effectively. So, you know, not none, but it's it's a very low percentage. So, I'm going to just basically look at what everybody else has done and find something close and try to emulate it. But I forgot about this last week. There's actually on the NMRA, there's a, uh, a, a PDF file of, of far more information than you will ever want to know about brake systems in your entire life. Um, and I, I got about to page three and promptly fell asleep. Uh, it's dry reading, but lots of pictures for those who uh, can avoid the text. So, but it, it's informative. <clears throat> And again, more than you really need to know, unless you really want to know. Okay. The basic AB brake system. There's a diagram. I've forgotten what year this was. It's the Model Railroader, not Model Railroader Magazine, the Model Railroader. So we're, we're in the 40s or something. Uh, but, you know, it hasn't changed that much. It, and it's pretty much generic to some extent. You've got your basic parts. You've got a, uh, a brake cylinder, a triple valve, and an air reservoir, an air tank. And the rest of the brake system is pretty much the same as a K-brake. You've got a, a couple of levers. You've got some rods connecting it to the uh, brake units in the trucks. I may or may not have this type of brake wheel system on a fulcrum and, and a handbrake quadrant. But, you know, it's basically those parts. You're just updating the... Uh, K brake cylinder to uh, the three parts. Okay, so this is right out of the precision scale catalog. So you can, you know, those are all part numbers if you really want to scribble them down or just steal it off the slides, but all this stuff's readily available. And guess what? Right in the catalog, there's a diagram. Wow, nothing like a, a diagram that gets you what you really need to know. How do, where, where do these go and how do I connect them together? Well, this is just one example of how you connect things together. This is uh, the box cars and refrigerator, you know, refrigerator reefer cars. Basically, a box, you know, house car. Uh, different cars have different arrangements. However, you get into hopper cars. Well, you don't have all that space, so you've got to bend things around, and it's all stuck at the far one end. It's a little tight. So, you want to do all this stuff. It's uh, a little tricky building this into your car, your models, if it's not already there for you. But, you know, this is actually turned a couple of, rotated a few uh, 90 degree angles, but same with the fulcrum, actuator, a lever, pretty much, you know, same idea. It's just crammed into the one side of the car. Okay, so where do these parts go? Well, God, that depends on what the model is. It depends what the prototype is. They can be anywhere on these cars. Uh, in the middle, these are all gondolas. It's, it's, I think they're all there are four different types of gondolas. Uh, it's pretty. You know, it was a precision scale brass car. This I think was a Pacific Limited car. I'm not sure if I remember exactly, but you can see they're well, you know, cram them all over one side, or spread them out across, or kind of spread them over this way, spread them that way, turn the air brake so reservoir that way. There's lots of possibilities. So, you know, choose one if you have the option. But if you know what the prototype is for, you know, what, where they did it on your car that you want to build a model of, follow how they did it. It gets a little funky, though, you know, when you're uh, some of these center 
sills. These are solid center sills. This is an open one, and it's a, and it's riding above it. Some of them you have to cut the holes in the uh, center sill for the levers to actuate through. It makes it a little more fun. I'm working on a resin car right now, and the levers go through the center sill. So you know, get out the drill and the knives and start carving holes. So now, again, variations on location. Valves over here, reservoirs here, triple valves over here, but okay, they're over here now, but there's the brake cylinder way over here. Okay, and it's above this bracing, which seems really odd to me, to be honest. I, you know, I would think it would actually be below that, but who knows? And this was actually out of a recent Craftsman. I don't even know what kind of car it is, but again, another variation on the theme. Triple valve on a bracket, air reservoir mounted here. There's your cylinder over here. Okay, so the levers go through here, connect through here, all this stuff gets connected up and there's the plumbing. I'll call things plumbing for lack of a better word since I have a congenital uh, hatred of do all things related to plumbing and having to do it. Uh, it's the fastest way I know how to empty my house is to ask me to do plumbing. The language will scare anybody. Okay, where do you get parts from? Well, okay, obviously I've showed you the precision scale catalog. So you know those parts are available. Precision, at least to no scale, they come in brass or plastic. Take your choice. Uh, you don't have to build in brass. You know, you don't have to do this. These are white metal. This is the old Glorcraft kit uh, pieces. I don't know who made these. These are Walters or somebody. Uh, the infamous somebody. <laughs> All Nation, they had a black plastic set. I'm not quite sure what that plastic is. I don't believe it's styrene, but it's, it's something funky. Wiseman Model Services. They sell an entire AB system. 10 bucks, it's white metal. I think it's 20 bucks if it's brass. Nice. It comes with a diagram. It comes with more than a diagram, actually. Okay, so here's our victim for how to install this. A Railcraft gondola. I did one of these, oh, a year or so ago. That one had brass sides. This one actually has, this one's all tin-plated tin plated steel. Um, makes it fun to solder. <clears throat> so we're not going to solder any of this stuff. We're just going to glue it all in place as much best as possible. And I'm not going to run a train line because the problem is I'd have to drill a hole through every one of these, go through here, around the corner, out the back, and drilling through these after the car has been assembled. Well, I don't have the tool for that. Um, it's just not going to happen. So we're just going to ignore the train line and pretend it's there. And that's what, the, there's our objective. This is the car I did about a year ago. Put all that stuff in there. So it seems reasonably easy. So here's the nice thing about the Wiseman set. It gives you everything, where everything goes. There's your standard car looking at the underside as if car were, you know. So here's your hopper over here. Yeah, so you can do this. Uh, Scale City Designs also sells an entire hopper AB system as a single casting. It's all, all three pieces. And some of the plumbing's even together with that. Um, and it's all white metal. So here's how, it, this, this, this is why I kind of like this. It gives you everything. Uh, but we're only going to use those three parts. Some brake levers, old white metal ones. Same story as last week. Turnbuckles, some brass wire, some 15 by 60 thousands flat brass. Same story. We we'll just keep moving forward. Okay. Well, you need a place for these things to sit. Now you, you know you turn over most cars, and you see someone just glued the the three pieces in, and they just randomly glued it. They drew a hole and stuck it in there with some glue and walked away. Okay, so that doesn't make any sense because it can't work. Brake cylinder has to sit above this stuff so it can run the levers and connect all the other plumbing. So this is quarter inch channel. And that spacing is important because the ends of the cylinder, let's back up, you can't see it. Okay, the ends of the cylinder here are actually lower than the cylinder on the brake cylinder. 
So the ends of the cylinder have to be on the outside of the channel that I glued in place. So you got to test fit it, get it right, glue it in place. Don't touch it until the glue is rock hard. And cylinder is mounted. Uh, this one came with the Clevis casting in it. I'm going to keep that because it's, it's a little it's a little chunky, but the opening is big enough that I can put the uh, levers into it. It's a bit of a compromise. Could have drilled, could have chopped it off, drilled it out, put a brass wire in, put a, put a clevis in that you make. But this height puts the lever just above the center sill. So there'll be a lever here. It's foreshadowing. Okay. Don't forget to drill things. I forgot to drill this back part. And with a little creative drilling with a hand drill and a Dremel, I got something close to a hole. I will, I will describe it politely as something close to a hole for a piece of plumbing to come out the back of the cylinder. Here are the holes. There are actually these two. They're well marked on the uh, Wiseman castings. So they're easy to drill. There are four holes you need to drill on the triple valve. Uh, a little sloppy on this one, but We'll have to make do with it. I tend to drill these at least five thousandths larger than the brass wire I'm using because fitting it all together later, uh, I don't want to be fiddling about trying to get things to fit into little tiny holes that I can't see or I'm working by almost by feel. And I want it to snap right into place, drop a, put a drop of glue in there and walk away right away before I disturb it. But once I get it right, I'm not looking back. Okay, so we'll mount the other two pieces. We've got the triple valve mounted, the holes face, the air reservoir, air reservoir is mounted, those two holes face the triple valve. That's where they go. And I just chose this location. These two could have been over here. This could have been over here. I just kind of cluster them tight together. So we're gonna optimize the amount of pain in getting all the brass wires all together in one place. Okay, brake levers and connecting rods and clevises, it's the same as last week. There's nothing really changing here. Same lever coming off the cylinder. That, that one goes to the brake wheel. This one goes to the truck. This one connects here, here. And that one goes to the other truck. And we've got three brake hangers. They're from the 15 by 60 thousands brass. 90 degree twist on each end of it. They're ready to go into place. Bingo, they're in place. Snap them in. Okay, that, that's all the easy, fun stuff. Now we got to connect all the uh, brake components together. Okay. There's a lot on this slide, obviously. It's so busy that it, this is what we call a really, really bad slide because it has too much stuff on it. Um, I would have gotten chastised terribly for doing this. 20 years ago. Anywho, there's your holes. I, I put a little color coding on. The, bo the bottom two of the triple valve go to the air cylinder. That one goes to the brake cylinder. The little green one actually connects down to the air, air the train line. Okay, lots of fun here. You've got a Insert in a hole, bend out, bend up, over, down, at an angle, straighten it out, and stick it in the hole. Okay. It's not too terribly difficult to do, but it's a lot of bend, test fit, bend, test fit, bend, test fit, bend, test fit, fiddle with it, snip, throw it away and start over, do it again. Oh, that, that's a lot closer. I'll keep that one. And then you get to do it a second time. And theoretically, since you did it, you had practice with the first one, the second one's a lot easier. And I can testify, the second one is easier. Um, mainly because I think you can actually see the hole better. This one's a really hard one because it's underneath this and you can't really see what you're doing. So you're kind of fiddling about with a pair of hemostats looking for the hole. And once it pops in the hole, you're like, give me this CA quick so I can put a drop of glue on it so it doesn't come back out of the hole. 
Uh, a hard one actually is connecting up to the brake cylinder because it actually has to come out, go down and around this, this projection off the triple valve. It comes over here, drops in the back, done. This comes out and goes down to the train line that's not here. Remember you're imagining it's there. There's a little bit of goo on the other end of this wire, just holding it down there so it won't wander off. And that's, that's all there is to it. This is really, this is it. It's not that hard. And I don't think I have another slide. And guess what, I'm right. Uh, because this car is in the paint shop right now, and that's been an interesting experience right now because of the ridiculous humidity we're having in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the DC humidity is uh, it's like wearing, wearing the weather. So that'll be done soon. Anybody have any questions for Martin? I do. Um, Martin, on your drawings and in prototypical operation, the the two rods that are going to the trucks do yeah. you typically pull or push? Uh, I think they actually push. That looking at your diagrams, I wasn't sure if the brakes were on or off. But if they were off, it looks like they push. Yeah. Well, hopefully they're off so the car rolls. Well, but the car's upside down; it can't roll. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, can, it can roll right off my workbench onto the floor. <laughs> All right, thank you. I can tell you that has happened more than once. <laughs> and I've bounced a few cars off the floor. Which fortunately Martin, I, I really I know this was a lot of trouble for you, but I can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this. Because well, so many I hear from so many modelers that this is why they just don't like to uh, to build cars because they, they just don't want to have anything to do with the underbody detail. So I hope by seeing how you did it and what you did. And, and frankly, that it's not rocket science to do this. I hope it helps a lot of modelers uh, consider uh, uh, revising their opinion and maybe taking a shot at uh, building some uh, cars with underbody details. So thank you so much for doing this. Not a problem, Jim. I mean, you know, you're right. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. The diagrams, instructions, what goes where, that all that information is readily available. It's, it's a little tedious sticking a wire into the holes that aren't there that you can't find, but a little bit of practice, you know, you, I can snap together a K break in, in minutes. Yeah. A, B takes me hours, but that's only yeah. because I'm distracted by 14 other projects and, and I, I, I've only, you know, I don't do it every day. K break I do, I've done four this week. So, and it's only Wednesday. I understand. It well, thank you so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it.